Hi, welcome back to another Maker Monday video with the President James K. Polk State Historic Site. My name is Kate, and today we are going to be making a toy that you can play with. Uh, this is what I've always called a whirly gig. Um, so here's one that I already made, and this is what the one we're going to make is like. Um, it's pretty easy, very simple. You can also make it um, with some alternate um, supplies. We'll talk about that, and I'll show you a different variation that we have for sale in our gift shop. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the supplies, and then we'll take a look at exactly what it is we're going to make. So the supplies you'll need are fairly simple. You've got some thick paper. This is some cardstock. You could also um, use construction paper, maybe just double up, or use a, a paper plate, piece of cardboard, uh, anything like that will work. I've got some markers to decorate. Uh, I've got some glue, so I'm going to fold my paper in half and glue it together um, to get our two sides. I've got something round just to trace a circle on your paper. Um, you can make this bigger or smaller, totally up to you. Got a hole punch, scissors, and yarn or string. All right, so let's take a look at some different variations of what we are going to be making today. All right, so like I showed before, I've got this whirly gig that I made previous. Uh, and basically what this is is just a spinning toy. Uh, these types of toys are ancient. Um, they go back all the way to, uh, I've seen references of the Sumerians, the Egyptians, um, the ancient Chinese. They show up in paintings from medieval Europe, and they're even part of Native American culture, used both as toys and sometimes ceremonially. Uh, so essentially, the version we're gonna make is a very simple version. Once you get it made here, you'll be able to spin it around and then just make it whirl, right? So. Um, the tighter that you can get the yarn, the longer you can keep it spinning. Now, I mentioned that there were several variations of this. You could make one pretty much exactly how we are making this with a button. So, you would just put the string through the button instead of having to make your disc. Uh, the button will spin a little bit faster because the button is heavier. But I've also got this version um, that is what we call a buzz saw. And this one is in our gift shop. And it's a little bit different. This is a little bit closer uh, to some of the examples I've seen being used by Native American groups for ceremonial purposes. And the reason is probably because it makes a much better sound versus um, our little paper one or even like a button. So this one, it's the same type of thing, right? You're gonna spin it, it builds up that momentum. And then, I don't know if you can quite hear it, but it's got the sound really of a buzzsaw. Okay, so our Discover Summer in C theme this week is Sounds of Summer. And this is one of the sounds we usually hear at our summer events when we have all our toys out for the kids. Uh, I'll try and get a little bit closer video of this so you can hear that sound really good. You can see why this might be used ceremonially uh, for things like um, calling the wind. That's one thing I've seen mentioned. 
So let's go ahead and get into making our own whirly gig or bus saw. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna take my piece of paper here and I'm gonna put glue on one side. And now I'm gonna take whatever I'm using to draw my circle. So in this case, I've got a little jam jar. All right. And then you can decorate this however you like. Um, just to make sure that I get the design on the opposite side exactly where it's going to need to be, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the circle and then color the other side. So now that we've got our disc, I happen to have a hole punch, so that's what I'm going to use, but you can use um, like a skewer, bamboo skewer, if you're at home you don't have a hole punch. Anything to just get um, a little hole right through, you want to get as close to the center as you can. I think this will be small enough that I can just... Bend it a little bit and get right to that center. So you're gonna going to need two holes, right? Just like uh, think of a button shape. Okay, there we go. And let's take our yarn, use about half of this. All right, so we're just gonna um, put the string or yarn up through the bottom, coming out the top and down through our second hole. And just tie those ends together. And that will be it. I would recommend um, experimenting with different types of string. I know, especially with the heavier, um, like button whirly gigs. Seems like a twine or a cotton string works a little bit better. All right, so I just did a double knot there. Make sure it's on there nice and good. All right, so we're just gonna put it on our index fingers, one side on each finger and twist it around. So kind of flinging it towards yourself and essentially what we're doing is just 
adding twist into the yarn. And then you'll pull it apart and push it forward. Now it might take a little bit of practice or less even practice and more just luck. Uh, with little kids, you might want to tell them to hold it, pinch it with their fingers because um, it can get kind of tight up on your finger if you just have it on your index finger. Um, but that's it. Pretty easy, a fun toy that kids have been playing with since ancient times. And when we think about too, like weather vanes or um, the fun little yard toys that blow around in the wind, you'll also hear those called whirly gigs. It's the same um, kind of spinning, whirling action, essentially, right? All right, so that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let us know below. You can find us online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can get links to all of those on our website at jameskpolk.net. Hope you guys enjoy making a whirly gig and learning a little bit more about this uh, very uh, historical toy. Let us know uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos. Otherwise, we will see you in the next one. Bye.